part two. We're still working our way through this handout. There was something that has jumped out at me um, when I was looking at it again today, uh, number eight on the sheet. It says, what is it that truly makes us right with God? How do we maintain that? So I, I know s these questions, many of them are very simple. Like, you know, if you've been in Christ and you've been in your walk and your Christian faith for any length of time, you probably could answer these questions, but it's okay. I, like, I'm not trying to put trick questions in there, right? I just want to open it up for discussion. I want us to be able to discuss this because we know that it's all about our relationship with God. It's all about having a close, tight walk with Him and directly affecting our relationship with God, directly affecting how close we're able to walk with Him is us understanding what is it that makes me right with God because I'm in this world, the world is filthy, it's dirty, it's like I'm in a pig pen. And as I'm walking through this dirty, filthy, vile pig pen, I'm getting dirty. <laughs> you know, like when I first came to Christ, I was a mess. <laughs> I was an absolute mess. And then I gave my life to Christ and He cleaned me up. And he changed me. He changed my nature. But the problem is that I'm still stuck with a sinful nature. My father, Adam, and my mother, Eve, <laughs> because of them and because of what they did, and I don't mean this in a bitter way, <laughs> but because of them and because of what they did, I have a sin nature that I have to deal with on the regular. So that's why the question is so simple, and we're just d digging into it. So what is it that makes us right with God? You know, what is it that brings us into this relationship? You know, there's different ways you could say it, explain it, answer that. So I don't think there's going to be any wrong answers that are going to come out today. But um, the that's first, go ahead. The first thing I thought about was uh, in Galatians, and you actually have it, but I have... I was thinking of uh, Galatians um, 5.16, but I, but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh is against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposite of one another. In order to keep you from doing whatever you want, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And it's... It's actually something that uh, Abner shared with me on our last good. Bible study. That's really good. That's really and good. And that's why I have it. Like. 516 is where you started. That yeah. was, yeah, that's 16 good. to 18. That's good. Walk in the Spirit. So if we're walking in the Spirit, we won't carry out the desire of the flesh. So let's break that down. I mean, that's a great scripture. What are we saying? When we say walk in the Spirit, what does that look like? Like, how do I get to that? Like, you know what I mean? How do I. I don't want to carry out the desire that's in my flesh. I want to walk in the Spirit, so I want to carry out the desire that would be in the Spirit. How do I do that? Like, What does that look like? How do we get there? It looks like in verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control okay. against that's good. such things that are no law. So that's the fruit, right? No pun intended. That's the fruit of the Spirit, right? That's the fruit that comes from walking in the Spirit. And I'm trying to scale back even further. That we're, going, we're getting there. This is really pointing us in the right direction. That's what the fruit should look like. If I want to know, if I want to know if I'm truly walking in the Spirit, I'll see this going on in my life even when even when I'm in the test, even when I'm in the squeeze, I'll still be able to see this fruit. Even when the struggle is on me, the pressure, the weight. See, I can, sitting at this table, there's no squeeze, there's no pressure on me. So I can talk about it. <laughs> we, can, we can talk about it. 
and, and it's easy for me to to show love you know and me to to show patience at this table you know but when I'm out there when I'm in the field you know when I'm at home and my wife is saying things or disagreeing with things and then it's being tested right and so what God wants us to get to is the place to where we can say that man I'm still seeing the fruit of the Holy Spirit even when she disagrees with me she challenges me you know um, I'm still able to love her you know what I've got a good example so um, I was sharing with Abner um, well I was just sharing how my wife um, she and I disagree about this particular lady you know she's a minister and um, we had a little bit of discussion about it two days ago and um, it led to a point to where she was frustrated I was frustrated and um, we disagreed and then it was like after we just kind of separated for a moment and then as I was passing by you know like she showed me some love you know she showed me love you know just just you know normal just show me love and in the past I can say that there was a time when when we had a real strong disagreement I was cold toward that and I was not very warm and receptive but in that moment I was able to see in that area the fruit was there okay I haven't always been able to say that and I'm ashamed to even have to admit but praise God I was able to reciprocate you know some love and and you know some kindness toward her and, and before you knew it you know I just we were hugging each other you know and just reassuring she was reassuring me I love you I was reassuring her I love you and uh, and it was okay and we we pushed through it we we moved past it you know I don't say that the issue is resolved because it's not but you know what that's progress in her walk that's progress in my walk for us to be able to do that you know what I'm saying because that was kind of a little bit of a, a squeeze that was kind of a little bit of some pressure I had a major breakthrough that morning I had been struggling this time home I don't know why it's like what, what, what is this what's going on like why why I was not connecting with Christ. I was not connecting. There was some kind of a barrier there, something between me and God. I, I don't know. I think it may have just been me. To some degree, I was going through the motions. I was just doing lip service in my time with the Lord. And I had to take another look, and I had to push through that and be like, man, what am I doing? What am I doing? You know, This is garbage. This is junk. You know, God deserves better than that. And I had gotten a breakthrough that morning. And I didn't know we were going to run into this later that day. But thank God I had the breakthrough. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if I had not had a breakthrough from God, that probably would have gone different. It probably would have resulted in a very different way. It would have looked very different. And so, you know where the disconnect was for me? when I got there that morning and I was trying to push through I needed to connect with the cross I needed to connect with Christ with with the blood of Jesus Christ I needed Aaron I need needed the hardness of Aaron to be broken and at some point God got a hold of me and he did he broke me there was tears involved I mean he needed to break through and I needed to press in because man, I don't know. It, it was it was a strange time home, to say the least, with that in that respect. So, but praise God, God got a hold of me just in time, <laughs> so that when that situation happened, I was able to act properly. You know, I was able to treat my wife with love. I was able to say that in that situation, in that moment, I did walk by the Spirit. I did, you know. And I did not carry out the desire of the flesh. Because the desire of my flesh was to try to be forceful. 
and say, no, I'm the husband. I'm the head over the wife, right? And I, you, you're supposed to be following me, you know. And is there any truth in that? Yeah, there is. There's some truth in that. But that tone behind it, that was flesh. That mindset is flesh. That's not the Holy Spirit. That is not the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is not going to try to force it. Never. The Spirit of God will lead me, if I'll just follow, to lead her, if she'll just follow. However long it takes for her to follow. Because it took me a while to follow Him. (laughs) Right? It took a while for me to truly follow Him. So, getting back to the original question, what is it that truly makes us right with God? Is when we allow Christ crucified to change us. We need to allow Him to change us. And how often should we do that? i got to go find the Scripture. I was supposed to have it ready. That was one that I wanted to include in this Bible study that I did. But... How often does he say we should deny ourselves? So Matthew 16, 24, it says, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Mark 8, 34 gives us, or, or Luke, let me go to Luke first. Luke 9, 23 gives us a little bit more. He says to them, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. See, that's the flesh. That's the flesh part. That's the part we don't want, carrying out the desire of the flesh. Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily, daily, and follow me. And then Mark 8, 34 is really the same. It's the same thing. But there he says, whoever, uh, if anyone wishes to come, come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So it was really that one scripture, the one in uh, Luke, I believe, is where it says daily. So what is taking up your cross daily mean? Okay, so... What are some examples of that? Taking up your cross is whatever in you represents the, the desires of the flesh. That needs to be executed. Like your humility. Like, as opposed to pride. Right. You know? So like when you know you're messing up, Right, and you go pray about it, you're taking up your cross. Yes. You're bringing it to Him. Because you're, when you pray, you're bringing it to Him. So, humility is going to be the opposite of pride. So, if I'm taking up my cross in that respect, I, I'm going to take this prideful issue that I have. I'm just using myself. It's easy to make myself the target. I'm taking this pride problem that Aaron Lusto has and I'm taking it to Christ and I'm saying, Lord, you know, it, it's not a formula, right? The words, is, it's not a formula. It's a principle. We have to get that. We have to get that. This is not what we're talking about in these studies on this topic. It is not a formula. It is a principle that we follow and that we live. We are living this. We are the walk, he t- which you read in your scripture, uh, verse 16. It says, Walk by the Spirit, or however yours wor- is worded. How is yours? Just the part about the 16. Sp- walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. Okay. And don't carry out the desires of the flesh. How is yours worded? Yeah, same thing. Okay. Is that how yours? And you will. Or you not. didn't turn there yet, huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's Galatians 5 16. So that's what, it, that's what that would look like. So we know what the fruit of the Spirit looks like. Okay, I gave you an example of something that happened between me and my wife, and we both got a little, uh, we weren't yelling, we weren't screaming, we weren't hollering, but there was a little bit of tone there with me. There was a little bit of tone there with her. Okay, so there was something brewing. But you know what? She decided, and I got to give her her props. So 516. Yeah, how does yours say it? I'd say, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Mm. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature is. Brian Gregor lied to you. That is so good. What what version do you have? NLT. New Living Translation. Yeah, it's very good. And I've been noticing that about his translation. When it talks about the sinful nature, it says sinful sinful nature. nature. 
I and like that honestly, I like this Bible, dude. It's got a bunch of good com- like the commentary in it's really good. Yeah, it's a study Bible, and he's read a lot of the good commentary in some of our Bible studies. It's been very, very, uh, you remember, it's been very beneficial. So, and still, if you see something worth reading, just come out with it. <laughs> so, I'm just, this look, this is very simple, and I think that the biggest problem is when we overcomplicate it. We make this more complicated than it has to be. It doesn't have to be. We're, we're executing, we're crucifying the deeds of the flesh. We're crucifying the desires of the flesh, the desires of the sinful nature. We're, that's what we're doing. We're crucifying that with Christ and His crucifixion on the cross. Because when He died on the cross... That is what he died for. He died for me and he died for my pride that I might have humility. He died for um, the hatred and the anger that I would have in my heart so that I could have love and I could have patience and I could have kindness toward my wife. When I disagree and when I feel like she should, you know, uh, be following my lead, you know, Okay. All right, Aaron. We get it. <laughs> you know, but look, it's only going to happen by the spirit of God. That's the only way it happens. I don't need to force my hand on my wife. I don't need that. I don't mean my literal hand. I mean my will. I don't need to force my will on my wife. That's not what I need. That's not going to help me. It's clear. It's been proven. It's been tested that does not work it's an automatic fail every time (laughs) what I need is I need the Holy Spirit to lead my wife I need the Holy Spirit and look this is the thing the Holy Spirit is God he doesn't force his hand on my wife (laughs) but he leads and if she'll follow so I do have some commentary for 16 for 5, 16 for Good. 21. Let's hear it. Uh, you want me to just hit the whole scripture real quick? 16 through yeah, 21. Yeah, go with it. Yeah, commentary. absolutely. Yeah. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your 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 good intentions. But when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation to the laws to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustfulness, lustful pleasures, ideology, sorcery, hostility, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, uh, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So then it goes on to the commentary... Very often, God's will for us stands in direct opposition to our natural desires. We must see this truth and be willing to turn away from following our own self-desires and redirect our course back to doing God's will as revealed in the Bible. Here we find a whole list of destructive behaviors that flow out of a self-centered life. We turn our lives over to God... When we turn our lives over to God, however, we allow His Spirit to help us control the desires that lead us to sin. More and more and more, God's desires become our own desires, considering the fact submitting our lives to God, to God's will, is the best choice we can make. I like what, uh, I like what they were saying about the Spirit and what the Spirit does in this process. So... What we were talking about with the cross, denying ourselves and taking up our cross, and you were asking, you know, what is that like? You know, what what is that? 
you know, how does that look? We take our cross, which is my pride, my arrogance, you know, my lust of any kind. It's not just sexual. We got to remember that when we right. say lust, we could be talking about greed. We could talk about the lust to gossip, you know, and slander. Talk about people. So. That's all my cross. That's what my cross looks like. You want to know what your cross looks like? You look inside your own heart, you know, and, and he'll show you and you'll, you already know. You already know what your struggles are. And so the sinful passions, the sinful struggles, that is your cross. And so ultimately your cross is his cross. And the reason I say that is because the only way for that to be crucified in you we want that to die. That's what we want to die. We want the activity of the sinful nature to die. Only problem is the sinful nature itself, that's not what's going to die. I mean, it will one day, but in the here and now, that doesn't die. But it's the activity. It's the activity of the sinful nature. That is what we want to crucify. That's what we want to die. And how does that happen? Is when we take that and we take it to Christ crucified and we recognize that what you did at Calvary that is it that is what that's what puts this thing down so the activity can be crucified and be put to death the sinful nature is really just being put to sleep it's just being silenced it's made neutral ineffective inactive it's still there so that's how that works and so He's already told us daily. We need to do this daily. Well, I had a great day yesterday. I went to bed. Everything was good. As far as I know. You know, I woke up this morning. I'm still feeling good. What then? I still want to go to the cross because I don't know what's lying ahead. And I know this much based off of my history, I know that there's never a day, there's never a moment, there's never a time that I do not need Christ crucified, that I do not need His power operating in my life. And I don't know what down this hall is going to walk down that way down the hall and find me and bring who knows what. I want to get ahead of it. I want to start my day at the cross. And so what I was getting to, I know that was a long way to come around and just say a simple thing. When we do that, when we go to the cross, we go to Christ crucified, that releases. Look, when we put faith in that, that releases the Holy Spirit, which you were just reading. It releases the Holy Spirit to do what He does. Now we're able to walk in the Spirit. So to me, like, we take it to the cross... And you bring all, all, all like, all these things. I just, you know, all these uh, the desires dreams. that I just, oh, the bad. Stuff. Read through the bad stuff. When you take that to the cross, to me, that's real worship. Like, you're telling God, like, hey, <laughs> yeah. bud, I'm screwing up, and I know I can't fix it myself. Yeah. I really need you. Like, yeah, that's real worship to me. Praise like, God. That's you're, good. You're putting it, you're putting it all on God, and I mean, that's what He wants. From, yes. from us, you know. I feel the Holy Spirit and, on that, bro. And it's That's uh, powerful. Like, what is wow. what is it that truly makes us right with God? I mean, I, I believe like that's faith. Yes. Without that's just faith. No evidence. Faith. Just, just this is just faith. You know, God is gonna provide. God is gonna make things right. I've been having a lot of crazy things going on in my life. And honestly, I don't care about any of it because I know it's going to work out. <laughs> Sounds like faith. Sounds like faith. Trust. You just trust it. You believe. You believe. And if I believe and I trust and I, I, I have faith that He's the answer, then I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Him. I'm going to bring it to Him. And I know that's probably why Abner is so, he's so uh, big on prayer, right? We have to bring it to God, right? We have to bring it to Him. If we don't bring it to Him, and the thing is, I don't, what I'm getting at also is that we don't have to wait until it breaks down to get it fixed. We can get ahead of it. We can do the maintenance. That's what I'm talking about. Well, if you're waiting until it breaks down, then 
what are you in it for? Just the blessings? Ah. Uh, I like that. That's good. Dude, that. He's dropping some truth bombs in here. Boy, what? It's facts. That is good. If you're that in it for good. just the blessings, I mean. Wow. Wow. Well, that, I don't think God's going to really respect you for that. I mean, and he knows. He knows why each of us are, That's right. are here, you know. That's right. So. Are we in it for the blessing or are we in it for the relationship? Are we in it because he's worthy? He deserves it. Remember what I had sent you? That uh, that uh, I need to send it to y- you guys. I'm going to send it to y'all. It's rough. But that little short eight-minute uh, <laughs> clip of that Paris radio oh, yeah. guy, he, he was talking about what is the reason that you came into the faith? Are you doing it just so you don't have to go to hell? Right. That's the or, old me would have would have said yeah right the old me oh yeah oh the yeah old me yeah, would have yeah. said that oh yeah easily i think it's, it's easily. beyond that you know what, what he's getting at is that we don't he, he used an example an analogy it was really good he said for me to say that the reason i want to be born again want to be saved is because i don't want to go to hell it's no different than two robbers in a coffee shop across the street from a bank and they're looking at that bank and they're trying to figure out how they're they're calculating how are we going to go rob that bank and get something for nothing he so but this is the main point he was saying the reason that we should want to be saved and should want to uh, be born again is so that we can glorify God so that we can give him worship that's that is true worship when we go to God not because he's going to bless me when I'm screw up you know and I don't want the consequences but we're going to him even when it seems like things are okay but I I still I realize I need him like I can't live without him I, I can't make it through a day without Christ I can't make it without him I know this right and he's worthy. He deserves my worship. You know what? And that may have been part of what my problem was when I was at home, is that maybe in the back of my mind there was something in my mindset that was along those lines. I don't know. But we we need to really do some deep self-evaluation on a regular basis. It needs to happen regularly. It's not like just, okay, right now, because... I'm not feeling connected to God. I believe He wants us to keep it that way. That we continue to search our heart, examine the motives. What's really going on in there? Deep, deep in there, you know? What's the reason behind the reason? Why I'm doing what I'm doing? Why am I here tonight? You know, I want God. I, it needs to be. It needs to come to this. You know, I, I need God. I want God. I want to worship Him. I want to glorify Him. You, you know? want to be the man that he wants you to be. Yeah. That we should be. That our wives, we want to be the leaders our wives need, our kids need. You yeah. know, that's kind of what I ask for. Just show me the way. I mean, I'm praying every single day because I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm struggling every single day. It doesn't. It it doesn't matter. Some days are better than others, but. I mean, the devil, I, I, I did so much wrong for so long, I feel like the devil's just steady on my back and he don't want to let me go, but I take it to the cross Amen. every yes, single sir. day, multiple times a day. Yeah, me too, me too. And that's, so, so when we first went to the cross the very first time, when we were born again and we received Christ the very first time, That was the removal of the penalty of sin. So we're justified. We're no longer guilty. God can look at us now, and when He looks at us, He sees the blood of Jesus Christ applied. And He sees not guilty. Not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. There's there's this video, and the first time I seen it, I could just, like, feel the Holy Spirit come over me. And, like, even now, I I want to cry because, like... It is. It's a, it was a very short video. I'll show y'all later. Yeah. It's a, it's somebody right in the video, 
and they they asked like four different people they asked them like why do you deserve to go to heaven and like the first three people right the first person says oh because you know I went to church my whole life and I praise and worship I was part of the youth service then he asked the next person why do you deserve to go to heaven oh you know I read my bible every day I pray every day you know I I, uh, I give my I give money to the poor the third one kind of says the same thing but the fourth guy his answer was just they ask him why do you deserve to go to heaven and he says I don't I don't deserve to go to heaven but because there was a man named Jesus Christ that died on the cross for my sin come on man he's like he gave me the one golden ticket to make it to heaven I have the opportunity to that's it and I was like that yeah that's the answer right there, that my brother. The that's it. Dude. That's the answer. For sure. That's the heart like, of If you get to heaven and, and and Jesus asks you that question, and you say that right there, that. Whenever we go to meet with God, when we go to pray, when we when we take it to the cross, when we when we go to Him, that needs to be our mindset. That's the mind. That that's the attitude. I don't even deserve to be here right now. <laughs> I'm going to the cross, you know, I'm going and I'm praying and I'm taking my petition, you know, about my wife and you about your son Aaron and your family and and the job, the reorg and everything that's going on. You know, we're taking all these things to him and I come with the attitude I don't really deserve to be here. I mean on my own accord, but because of Christ, because of the blood of Christ, I'm able to be here. And sometimes Thank you. I recently started watching The Chosen and I, I always see that. I re watch the part where Jesus tells, is like, Nicodemus is like crying in the corner, and Jesus is like saying, like, you were so close. I'm so like, powerful. I love that scene. I'm like, man. I know I, which one. Oh, I want to be like was, Nicodemus. He's around the corner with his bag. When he or, left yeah. the gold out. Yeah, he left the money for him. Yeah. I don't want to be like Nicodemus. Oh. Like, I think that, Nicodemus that hurt to the bro. kingdom. Yeah, he did. He ends up coming around. The scripture shows that. Well, right, you know, yeah. in that moment. Yeah, right? but you don't want to be in that place. He wanted to so bad. Yeah, he wanted yeah. yeah. to just drop everything and follow. He did. Yeah. But. Yeah. He that part's not even in the scripture, even. but I thought it was a really yeah. good. Uh, it was a good add to yeah. the to the film, you know. But yeah, it, because it represents so many of us, right? I think we probably could say that there maybe was a time in our life or a moment, even if it was just a moment, when we were that. We were like, oh, I want to, and I know I need to, and but I just, I can't. I got all this stuff. I got my status. I got my position. I got the people know Aaron as this Aaron, not that Aaron, you know. And maybe, you know, I struggled with that for, for a while. For years, I struggled with it, you know, in my own way, you know. I can identify with it. Oh, when I, the first time I saw that scene, I broke down crying, bro. Me and my wife both were just like, ah. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like God, have mercy, Lord, man. I see myself. That anytime I watch stuff like that, I always reflect. It reflects back to me. Oh, yeah, I'm always time. looking at myself, you know. And that, that's the purpose of it, right? It's for us to look inside. That's really good stuff, man. That's really good. So. I had some scriptures. Um, I mean, you went to verse sixteen in chapter five, but uh, we could we could stay in chapter five because we're already there. But if we read verses two through ten, so I want to clear up a confusion because this uh, can be confusing. Um, actually, this is the easier stuff to understand. I was going to read the second portion. So Galatians 5, 2 through 10, if somebody wants to read that. And we're not going to stop to discuss it right away because I want to go to the other ones. Okay. And, uh, 2 through 5? Five? 5? Five? Yeah, this is about the works. Yeah, 5, 2 through 10. I got, I got, I got 4 through 5 highlighted. You do? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, perfect, man. You want to read it? I mean, I'll go. I'll Galatians go five two through ten, and then we can get someone else to read the next one. I got commentary for one through twelve. Okay. Um, you want me to stop at ten or go to twelve? Yeah, go to twelve. That'd be all right. Okay. Uh, so, 
I'll just start at once. Uh, That's fine. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Listen, I, Paul, tell you this. If you are counting on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be no benefit to you. I'll say it again. If you are trying to find favor with God by being circumcised, you must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses. For if you are trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, you will have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. But we who live by the Spirit eagerly wait to receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. You are running you were running the race so well who ha who has held you back from following the truth it certainly isn't god for he is the one who called you to freedom this false teaching is like a little yeast that spreads through a whole batch of dough i am trusting the lord to keep you from believing false teachings god will judge that person whoever whoever he is who has been confusing you Dear brothers and sisters, if I were still preaching, if I were still preaching that you must be circumcised, as some say I do, why am I still being persecuted? If I were no longer preaching salvation through the cross of Christ, no one would be offended. I just wish that those troublemakers who want to mutilate you by circumcision would mutilate themselves. Wow. Wow. And then the commentary for that is uh, the Galatians faced the same basic choice that all of us face. Should we choose life of power and freedom in Christ or a life of slavery through useless solutions? If we make a bad choice, we risk being cut off from the deliverance available to God's people. There is no deliverance from the power of sin except through Christ and His powerful presence in our lives. Amen. Amen. Do you have the other one? Does anybody? Do you have the other one? Uh, Galatians two. Galatians two. What? Galatians uh, two sixteen, 16 to twenty one. Sixteen to twenty one. Yeah. We're gonna hold on to that Galatians. and what you just read because it's all gonna tie together. It's all saying, talking about the same thing. Verses 16 through 21. Yes. I'm going to start 15 through 21. Okay. We are Jews by nature and not sinners from the Gentiles. Nevertheless, knowing that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ so that we be so that we may be justified by faith in Christ, not by works of the law, since by works of the law no flesh will be justified. But if while seeking to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have also been found sinners, is Christ then a servant of sin? Far from it. For if I rebuild what I have once destroyed, I prove myself to be a wrongdoer. For through the law I have died to the law, so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ, that is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave, me, and gave himself up for me. I do not nullify, nu, nu, how to say that? Nullify. Nullify the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. Yes. So when he says nullify, you got what you got. Go ahead. I got to read this commentary. It's it's for two. Okay. It's two. It's twenty through twenty one. Yeah, go with it, man. That's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, go with it. What a wonderful assurance Christ Himself, Christ Himself lives in us. 
this is a paradox. We are crucified with him, nevertheless we still live in the flesh. In the spiritual in the spiritual realm our old natures died with Christ. We have new natures and yet in the net in the natural realm we still struggle with our bodies of flesh that crave sin. We cannot make our flesh change, but by faith in Christ, we can operate above the level of our sinful flesh. We can allow Jesus Christ himself to live in us and through us, empowering us to live holy lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. By faith, we can live according to our new natures. Yes, yes. What, what, what I say dies is not the sinful nature, but the activity of the sinful nature. That's what dies, because we're stuck with the nature but that's the beauty of it is that the relationship is dead right like the ex-girlfriend we always talk about right um it's the activity is dead and, and that's that's good that's really good the way it was worded yeah, there i mean they say the old natures died not really that the 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 sin nature okay i got died. you the old man so it really, the old man yeah the old man dies but yes. we cannot make okay. our flesh change right but, uh, yeah, the sinful nature. Okay, I see where you come. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then the other one. Uh, so the, the the one you read, the one you read, or excuse me, yeah, the ones that y'all read <laughs> together, and then this one I'm reading. It all, all three are going to go together. So I'll read Romans three twenty through thirty. Um, as soon as I find it. Okay, so it says because. By the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe, for there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace, through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. So when we see the word redemption that's in Christ Jesus, it's talking about what he did on the cross. Whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation. Propitiation is a word, it's just a big word that's talking about how the blood is applied, how the blood is applied to our heart, to our life. The propitiation in his blood through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in the forbearance of God, forbearance is just the patience of God. He passed over the sins that were previously committed. For the demonstration, I say, of his righteousness at this present time, for the demonstration, I say, of his righteousness at this present time, so that he would be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. And when we see the word faith, words faith in Jesus, we know that it means Jesus and what he did at the cross. Right. That's the context. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. And he, so then he says, where then is the boasting? Where, where will we brag? You know, How are we going to bro? He says it's excluded. There's no room for boasting or bragging. There's nothing. Nothing in me. By what kind of law? A law of works? No. A law of faith. So he's saying... The law that's at work here to give me liberty, to give me freedom, is not a law of works. It's not what I do that gives me the liberty and the freedom. He's saying it's the law of faith. Again, it's talking about the principle. It's the principle of what we do when we take it to the cross. We take it to Christ. We take it to Him and what He did. And we let what He did on the cross, let that destroy the works of the flesh in my life. Let that destroy these mindsets. Let it destroy these attitudes, these thoughts, these wrong ways of thinking. So he's saying, but we maintain. He's trying to say, so we're we're gonna we're 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 still saying that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Okay? And then he says, is God or is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not God of the Gentiles also? Yes, of the Gentile of Gentiles also. Since indeed God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith is one. Do we then nullify the law through faith? 
In other words, do we make it useless? Do we make the, the, the law of no effect through faith? May it never be. So he's saying the law still has a role to play in this process. We need to know the truth. We need to know what's right and wrong. And so he says, may it never be. On the contrary, we establish the law. So through faith, I'm able to obey the law. That's what the point is. I'm able to obey the law through my faith. Right, because through your faith makes you want to do good works. Boom. If you're only doing good works to try to get into heaven, then you're not going to get there. Inevitably, yeah. Inevitably, that's like what will path, happen. Pathway to hell is paved on uh, good, good intentions. intentions. It's like that's a freeway, right. one of the big four lanes. Yeah. Pathway to him is small, like this table. The dirt road. Dirt huh? road. Like a dirt road. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> the less traveled road. The less traveled. Where there's probably thorns and bushes and there's all kinds of crazy stuff on that path. Yeah. As we have all noticed. Okay, so what you had read in your commentary and what I'm communicating and what, what, what we're all saying, we understand how we arrive at the place where we're right with God. We understand how to arrive there. We know it's faith in Christ and what He did. We know it's, it's the principle of the law of faith. If it's a law, it's the law of faith. (laughs) If we're going to make a law out of anything, we're going to make a law out of our faith being placed in Christ crucified. So if I'm doing that every day and I'm going there every day, what I've done is I've made a law out of me going to God. That's the only law that is righteous. That's the only law that is good and beneficial to me in, in this context. But if I'm thinking that just because I read my Bible, I'm gonna get there that way. Just because I read, I read a lot, man. The more I read, I'm gonna, I gotta get some. Yeah, you know, it's gotta help some kind of way. It is gonna help. But if I'm thinking that's what makes me righteous, it and then it, help. it will help. The message is gonna help. If you're not soaking it up, it's not gonna help. It's not gonna help. You're if I'm not reading yeah. the Bible just to read the Bible, so you can, like, like he was saying with the, the three people or four people that got asked questions. Oh, I'll read my Bible every day. But it's like the fourth person said, because Jesus died on the cross, for me, he gave me that ticket. Having that faith is what's going to get you there. I mean, yeah, this is great. It, 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 it helps us become closer. The hungrier we get, right? Uh, I don't know if I'm, if I'm wording this right, but... Uh, um. Completely lost track. Uh, basically, faith is the only, faith. Faith is going to make you want to do good works. Yes. If you're just doing, yeah. if you're just reading your Bible, thinking I'm doing, I'm doing good by reading my Bible, or I'm doing good because I pray once a night, I'm going to heaven. Like, yeah. It all goes back to. Christ crucified. Yeah, the way you described the the Bible reading and the praying, it, it was, you described it in a way that it could be heartless, it could be mindless, it could be me trying to let my work, my alleged good work, right, be the way. I believe it goes back to yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter thirteen of faith. What was it? Right, First Corinthians, Corinthians chapter thirteen. We're says talking what? about uh, if I do not have love, if you do. Oh yeah, that's thirteen. Yeah. The love chapter. The love chapter. It's like I, I sent an error some song, mm-hmm. and it's like if you give all your money to the poor, even go up to a cross to be, uh, uh, what is it? Burned as a martyr, and do not have love, then did it for nothing. I, uh, right? It's chapter thirteen. It's yes. Talks yeah, about yeah, something yeah. like that. First Corinthians thirteen. But it's, it's exactly it's what you're chapter. talking about. Right. That's it's really like good. Pedro could read four chapters out of his Bible every night, right? And I could read ten. But if he's soaking up his four chapters and I'm soaking up nothing, it's not doing you any good. It's not doing me any good. I could breeze through this thing. That's right. Joy reading. Yeah, exactly. Just words. And the idea is we're not using the work to be the means to get to God, 
we're using faith as the means to get to God, and in return it produces those works. But those works are not going to be without love, like what you were saying. And uh, I like the way you, I, I never really thought about it quite like that, but that's a good application. Absolutely. When I'm reading my Bible, I'm reading it in the attitude of me loving on God through His Word. Wanting you know? to draw near. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same thing in prayer. When I'm praying, and look, I could pray three hours, and it could be amazing if I have that love, you know, and my heart's in the right place. Hey, quantity can very well be quality, but just because it's quantity, it does not always mean it is quality, right? So, yeah, that's it. And so we just need to remember that it's His work. It's what He did on the cross. That's what brings me in. That's what draws me near. And then in return, it produces good works in me. The want, the, the love to sit down and yeah. read this. I love the way you did that, man. That was I believe that was the Holy Spirit dropped that in on you. Yeah, I think about that a lot. Well, I like that song That's a lot. Really good. And, like in right the oh, it's chapter thir- it's the first Corinthians chapter thirteen, um, one through four. It's if I speak with the tongues of mankind and of angels but do not have love. I have become a noisy gong or a clanging uh, clamor. If I have the gift of prophecy and I know all the mysteries and all the knowing, in all the knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Mm. And if I give away all my possessions to charity, and if I surrender my body so that I may glory, so that I may glory, but do not have love, it does me no good. Wow. That's good. Where was that? 13? Yeah. 1 Corinthians. Make sure you're in 1st, not 2nd. Uh, and that's chapter 13. It's the love chapter. It's a beautiful, beautiful chapter. It's absolutely amazing. It's 13 what was it? One. The whole chapter is yeah, whole pretty chapter much. Is if you start at the very first verse, it uh, takes you through the qualifications of love or I guess what love really looks like, you know. So um, I wanted to get to these other two scriptures. Um, I wanted to start with the second half of these scriptures that what we already read, because that really points us in the direction that this is what it is. It's faith, right? It's faith in the right object. But then if someone could look up James 2, uh, 17, that's a lot of verses. James so whoever likes to read. Yeah, James 2, 17 through 26, and then I'll look up, I already am there, on Romans 2, 13, which is just one verse. Um, I'll read that one if someone else wants to read, or if y'all want to just divide it up, or however. What, 17? Yeah, it's going to be James chapter 2. There's no uh, chapter 7. Act as free people, and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as a bond, servants of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and gentle. Where are you at? uh, Oh my goodness. I knew something was not right. Lord. You're in John? First or second John? I'm on first Peter. Oh, you're in Peter. First Peter. Where are we at? James. 17. I got all that. Chapter 2, verse 17 through 16. I got okay, go ahead, I got go ahead. fourteen through twenty six highlighted with some commentary. <laughs> okay. Go with it. Pedro's got it. You got it? Starting from sixteen, right? Seventeen seventeen? Yeah, why don't you read In, uh well, you could start with fourteen. Why don't we 14? Yeah, we'll fourteen we'll, through twenty two. Read up to I'd say verse twenty. Okay. And then we'll get um Zach to read the rest of it. Faith and works. Yeah. What use is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but has no works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and be filled, yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, oh, what use is that? In the same way, faith also, 
if it has no work is that being itself but someone may well say you have faith and I have works show me your faith without the works and I will show you my faith by my works you believe that God is one you do well the demons also believe and stutter but you are willing to acknowledge you you foolish person that faith without works is useless Yes. Okay. So, Zach? Starting at 20? 21. 21. Okay. Yeah. Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So, so you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Rahab, the prostitute, is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid the messengers and sent them safely away by a different road just just as the body is dead without breath so also faith is dead without good works okay now um, I, I want to just read this it's just one verse and it goes hand in hand with what is being communicated here and I know that this possibly could be confusing after what we just got finished talking and reading about in the other three but that's the reason I wanted to tackle this because it's important that we do get it right it's very important so verse 13 of Romans chapter 2 it says this for it is not the hearers of the law who are just before God but the doers of the law will be justified okay so The point that is being communicated here, first we need to understand the word justification. Justification, that word in the Greek, can be used more than one way. And one of the ways that it is used in the Greek, and I believe it would apply in this particular passage, let's see, I'm going to find the word, I got to find, okay, there it is. So the word justified, check this out. Tell me if this makes sense. So I know we just got finished reading those other scriptures and they were talking about how works is not going to justify us. It's faith in the right object, faith in what Christ did, faith in His work, right? His finished work. But let's just look at it from a different perspective. We're not contradicting anything. The word justify can also mean to show, to exhibit, to show, to exhibit, to demonstrate okay so it's not the demonstration itself that's justifying it's what the demonstration is pointing to it's the faith it's the faith it's still the faith but if your faith is never producing anything good never producing a change if it's never producing a work that's what James is saying it's a dead faith so we just got to understand the context, and the context is that. It's, it's not saying that the works are actually what justify us. Um, the works qualify our faith. The works point to our faith and qualify them and say, ah, that's, the fa- that's it. That, that man has faith that is pure faith. It's godly faith. Why? How do I know? We'll, we'll look at his life. Look at his life. He walks in love. He walks in the Spirit. He's not fulfilling those evil desires when he's frustrated. He he restrains. He gets away. He takes it to the Lord. He gets it right. You know what I mean? He's not just letting it run. And faith without works is dead. And that's what James is saying. So justification is proven. It what the works do is the works point to the justification that's taken place in me and it tells, it's telling. It's just telling a story. What is that faith about? It's looking at Abner and it's looking at his works 
and it's uh, it's telling a story about Abner. What 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 is Abner's faith really? Is it is it the right faith? It's looking at each and every one of us. And that's what our works will tell us. And when I'm having a difficult time and I'm struggling and, and I'm, I feel like I'm sinking rather than swimming and staying on top, it's telling me something. Okay, in this moment where I feel like I'm sinking, my faith is not really the right kind of faith. In this moment, look, it doesn't mean my whole, I'm shipwrecked completely, okay? It's just saying, look, I'm on the wrong track right now. If I keep going down this way, I could become shipwrecked. I, the thing could sink completely, right? Go to the bottom of the ocean like the Titanic. And, and that's really what works are for. Works are to let us know where our faith really is. I guess you could compare it to people that are like, they have the, like for instance, an example. Uh, Abner. Abner's a qualified and certified pipe fitter, but every day he goes out there and he proves why he's the pipe fitter. I like it. That's good. You know, his work shows for himself it why does. he's a pipe fitter. It shows what kind of a worker he yep. is. He's a pipe fitter worker. What you got? I know you got some. I just had some commentary. Let's read it. Let's go with it, brother. Faith <clears throat> needs to be accompanied by action. Some of us have found it easy to seek God's help, but when called to obey God, we refused. We all have made commitments that we failed to back up with our actions. Because this is a prevalent problem, James left us a powerful reminder. Faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it, produce, unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. If we believe God can help us, but refuse to obey his will, we prove that our faith is dead. True faith in God expresses itself in committed action. Our actions need to back up our words. That's good. Amen. You might want to add to that. That's putting it right there. Man. That's, that's really good. My life needs to show it. Yeah. It needs to show it. And I don't get it right every time, so don't don't be hard on yourself. And don't we can we can be counterproductive if we're if we're too down on ourselves and we're too hard on ourselves. It could be in such a way that it's more of a guilt thing than it is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The conviction of the Holy Spirit is 100% productive. If I allow His conviction to lead me to the cross, it will produce repentance and it will produce a change. And it will be in the form of faith that shows good works. However, if I'm looking at myself and I'm, I'm examining what I see and I, I, I don't like it, I mean, whether it's conviction or guilt, I, I don't like it either way. But if I allow this thing to just really spiral me down and just really torque me down, and it's not leading me to a redeeming factor, we've got to be redeemed in this thing. If I'm struggling with something, I need to be redeemed from it. And, and going to the cross and going to Christ, that's what brings the redemption. That's what leads me out. It brings me out of whatever that is. So we got to recognize and know the difference between guilt, which would come from Satan, and condemnation, and then the difference between conviction, which would come from the Holy Spirit which it's always going to produce life. It always produces a change every time. I like something I recently saw, and it was about Peter and Judas, what the difference between them both was. Uh -huh. Because Peter denied Jesus three times, right? That's and good. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 silver pieces of silver. But the difference between Peter and Judas is that Peter repented and, came and still believed, you know, he repented and Judah relied on his own words and that's why he hung himself. That's good. And Judas could have had, could, I, I mean, I believe that he could have had the opportunity yes. to repent and yes. he chose to. He could have. He didn't take turn it on to Jesus. Own. He didn't turn to Jesus. He was remorseful. The Bible says he, he was, he regretted what he did. He was remorseful. You, he didn't just, uh, the scripture tells us that, but then you also see in his yeah, actions. Because he went to go give him he back. He went and he brought the silver back. 
What was he doing in bringing the silver back? To show that it wasn't worth it. Yes. And he was, it was a work. But the problem is that work, I think that he was putting all the emphasis on that and not on what really was able to redeem him, Christ. Christ was accessible. He, he could have connected with Christ even as Christ was going to the cross. He could have connected. He could have repented. Uh, I can't remember. I think it's Paul says, there's a sorrow that produces repentance, a godly sorrow. But then he talks about there's a worldly sorrow that produces death. Yeah. And that's what we see in... Where's that talk about? It's going to be in one of his epistles. I'll find it. No, it's not going to be in Acts. It's going to be one of his letters. Uh, Godly sorrow produces repentance. Let's see. I'll find it for you, though. It's 2 Corinthians 7.10. And when you get it, go ahead and read it to us. It's a beautiful, beautiful... I mean, I say it's beautiful, but it, it really gives you a good comparison between the two. And then when you look at the life of Judas, and you look at the life of Peter, and you look at those two stories, I guess it's a great analogy. You know, what you just brought out there is really good. It really Second shows. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians mm-hmm. chapter 7, verse 10. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. Now that's That's interesting. That's like anxiety and depression, stuff like that. Yeah. That's good right there. Yeah. Wow. We was kind of talking about uh, in church the other day about Isaiah struggling with anxiety. After uh, is that? yeah, well after wow. after uh, Jezebel is that right? Elijah, 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 right? yeah, Elijah. Yeah. Oh yeah, Jezebel said. Oh, yeah, um, he was stressed. Yeah, he <laughs> ran like a hundred miles, right? And he, and he outran the chariots. Right. Dang. <laughs> he, yeah. He's running for oh, his yeah. life, scared that he's gonna die. Dang. He, he's so invested in his. In his flesh, his own anxieties, he never even tasted death. He he went. Yeah. That's right. Huh? He he yeah. ascended. That's right. He went up in a chariot of fire. Yeah, it's a, it's a type of rapture. It just goes to show you that anxiety, depression, it's all worldly. It's all yes. It's all the sinful nature. I like the it's way you the said enemy. that. I like the way you said that. It's world. It is world. And the world hates us. But walking in the spirit yeah, and the world hates us. It's worldly and the world hates us. It's of the world. Well, but we we're not, not of the world. Exactly. That's Strangers. why the world hates us. That's why they hate us. That's what Jesus they said. They hate us because they ain't us. <laughs> Amen. They're not redeemed. There's nothing but hate for someone who's not redeemed and is not seeking to redeem, be redeemed, you know? Yeah, so when we walk in the Spirit, man. I mean, that's why we're dealing with struggles every single day. Yeah. Because the enemy is steady trying to poke us yes. and pry us away from the path that we're on now. Yes. Just remember, man, there's coming a day we're going to be redeemed in full, in full. It's paid for in full. We just haven't experienced the redemption in full yet until the glorification. So in the beginning or earlier, I said that when we're born again, he removed the penalty of sin. And so right now we're going through the process of him removing the power of sin over us. Okay? But at the very end when he returns and we're raptured and we're caught up with Jesus he's going to finally remove the presence of the sin nature the presence of it is going to be gone completely and we have to hang on to that no matter what we're going through no matter what we're going through 
as bad as it gets, and sometimes it gets really bad, and sometimes we really blow it, and we lose it, it's okay. It's okay. We need to repent. We, we just, just like we have always done before, we repent. And just like we are doing, talking about doing now, we don't have to wait till we blow it. If we do, hey, it happens. It happens. It happens. But we need to just continue to take it to Jesus. Take it to Jesus. Take it to Jesus. We can do it as a, as a form of maintenance. We don't have to do it to always fix it. Let's just maintain. Let's just maintain. Because we need Him. Because we love Him. Because He loves us. Because we want to worship Him and we want to glorify Him. That's all the reasons in the world to do it. Do it for the maintenance. I like that. Do it for the maintenance, not for the fixing. Don't do it for the fixing. <laughs> like a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Some people, uh, are in it only for the blessings, right? So they're they're waiting till the till it needs fixing. And then some people believe they don't want to bother bothering God with all their problems but I mean Jesus said it give them to me my yoke is my yoke is easy and my, my burdens are light every day bring them to me that's right that's, that's good that's what it's all about come on man that goes right hand in hand with everything else we've been talking about that's scripture right there isn't it amazing, like, when, when we do a Bible study like this, like, right at the front end, you brought out that scripture that Abner had brought up, and then it's all just, it all ties together. There is so much in scripture on this topic, and I have to say, this is the theme topic of the Bible. I love end times, I love millennial reign of Christ, I love all that stuff. It's in the Bible, so we got to talk about it at some point in time. I have to admit, though, this is the thing. Because if we don't get this right... This is what it's all about. This is it. This, this is the, our walk. It's the meat and potatoes. It is the meat and potatoes. And so I've also looked at it like we're weeding our garden. I'm taking it. I'm denying myself daily. I'm going to Him daily. I'm weeding the garden as those weeds keep coming up. They, it's the sinful nature. The weeds of the sinful nature keep wanting to come up. I'm weeding them. I'm pulling them out, pulling them out. I mean, I'm not doing it, but I am doing it in a sense when I take myself to the cross. To him, yes. Yeah. And I, I just let him crucify him, crucify him, kill it, kill it. Oh, that right there. Oh, that attitude right there. I need you to execute. I need you to crucify him. Well, yeah. Sometimes I'll, I let out some David prayers. <laughs> When I'm going through stuff, I just ask God to come in and rip whatever is wrong. Rip it hand. out. Get rip it out. out. Kill it. Kill and it. And all his descendants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amen. Brother. And you know what the beautiful thing about that is? He answers that prayer in that moment. And then the day that we meet him in the air, he's going to answer that prayer in finality. He will kill it. He will destroy the literal physical presence of the sinful nature once and for all. And it is never, ever going to come back. Like the selfish, any of us. the no. selfish flesh of me. Like I really want to watch my sons grow up to be men. Yeah. But like, in the other token, it's like being homesick for a place you've never been. You know. Like I'm ready. I'm ready for that. Yes. No sinful nature. Yeah. No bull crap. Yeah. And we're going to watch them grow up in that as well. I mean, unless they're already grown, who knows what our new bodies are going to look like. But they're still, we're all still going to be growing in God. You know, yeah. We're still all going to... We'll never not need Him. We'll never be at a place where we don't need Him. It, even in our redeemed, glorified body, we will still need Him. Him. He is the life source. Yeah, but how cool it would be though. Just go hang out with Jesus. Yeah. 
What up, dog? You doing good today? <laughs> oh, you gonna be bowing before him. You're gonna be buckling to his presence. <laughs> My guy, how how's your day going? <laughs> Oh yeah, it's gonna be powerful, man. I, I can't. It's like I always seem to want to come back to that part of this message, you know. It's gonna be a terrible day too, though. Like the same it thing. is. It's gonna be a great day for some, but it's gonna be terrible for others. And that word is it describes God's wrath, the great and terrible day of the Lord, of the Lord's wrath. It's gonna be great and terrible for some. Yeah, for a lot of people. It, it'll be great. It'll be good for us. It'll be great. It'll be great in scope, great in magnitude, because we're talking about something massive. He says Daniel describes it. Zechariah describes it. And then Jesus himself describes it. All three of them. They all three describe it as something the world has never seen before and something that they will never see again afterwards. I was just looking at that yesterday. Uh, me and my mom was getting into it while I was home about it. Yeah. Oh, my sister shared something with me.